Hey, this is Hans the Ramen Raider, and today is January 19th, Momofuku Ando Day, the day we celebrate the life and times of Mr. Momofuku Ando, the man who invented the instant noodle. Um, a little about them, uh, he was originally born in Taiwan, a lot of people don't know that. He emigrated to Japan uh, after World War II. He saw people there after the war and could tell that they were in, you know, there was pretty tough times after a war hits a country. And he noticed that there was a lot of problems with people getting enough food to eat. So it got into his head to do instant noodles. He then ended up trying over and over and over and having like little to no luck doing it. Um, he would dry him out, he'd do this, he'd do that. And then one night he noticed his wife making tempura. And when you fry the batter for tempura, which is wet, it, the frying process takes the uh, liquid out of it. Well, that's how he figured out how to fry the noodles. Um, when you do that, it pulls the liquid out, leaves tiny little holes so you can uh, reintroduce them to hot water and they spring back to life. And the first, yeah, the first time it came out was in 1958. And that was Nissen Chicken Ramen which I'll be showing you in a little bit. Um, they still make it, actually. Um, and they've sold zillions of those. Next big thing that he did was in 1971 when he uh, noticed people on flights. Businessmen were taking little cups and mugs and instead of having coffee in them, they would ask for hot water and they would bust pieces off of the chicken ramen and put them in their cups. And so they could have instant noodles on the plane. Well, hey, he could improve on that, right? So that's what he did. So then the cup noodle came into existence in 1971. Uh, another thing that he is known for, and this was in 2005 actually, he decided that it'd be really neat to allow a Japanese astronaut who was going to be aboard the space shuttle to be able to have ramen in space. So they came out with a thing called Space Ram, where they vacuum seal instant noodles in these packages. A pretty neat idea. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Ando died January, yeah, January 5th, 2007. And so today is a day to commemorate Mr. Ando. Um, you might be asking yourselves, why? January 19th. What's up with that? I've heard other dates. I've got this. I printed it out and I thought I would just read it word for word. Momofuku Ando Day was established January 2007 at a small hospital in Dallas, Texas. Recognizing the genius life of the man whose product has fed millions, a group of healthcare workers first celebrated the day on January 19th, 2007. Each participating employee brought several packages of their favorite ramen flavors to a banquet table from which employees could sample. The second year, January 2008, participating employees developed unique dishes using ramen as the prime ingredient. The day was also kicked off the It Starts With Me campaign, promoting charitable giving and customer service. Unfortunately, the hospital was corporately closed in June 2008. In January 2009, several of the transferred employees continued Momofuku Ando Day by sharing it with their new co-workers at a sister facility. Understanding that ramen has been a staple food for victims of disaster and the poverty-stricken as well as for college students and those wanting a quick meal, Momofuku Ando Day became an endeavor to help feed those in need by fundraising for charitable organizations or simply calling attention to poverty or hunger through ramen or food donations to local food banks and free meal kitchens. The day has since become celebrated the second Friday of January to allow Mr. Ando due recognition. Now, it sounds like this article was written a while back and I don't know that that still actually exists. I haven't heard anything to the contrary. Uh, actually, I think I did, but I figured these people at this hospital thought January 19th would be a good day. And so 
Hey, Christmas is on the same day every year. I really think uh, Momofuku Ando deserves some respect, so he's gonna have his Momofuku Ando day as far as the Ramen Raider is concerned on the same day every year. So, yeah, I mean, it could be on a, a Wednesday, a Tuesday, a Thursday even. Today it's, uh, I think it's a Friday. So, all right. So, well, let's uh, take a look at a couple products that um, are kind of pivotal in, at least one is, in uh, the career of Momofuku Ando and Nissin Foods. Actually, I believe it's pronounced Nishin Foods over in Japan. But, you know, it's um, some habits die hard, so it's kind of hard to break that one. But anyways, all right, let's get going. All right, so for Momofuku Ando Day, I wanted to show you a couple things that were kind of pivotal in the whole uh, Nissan ramen thing. Um, I'll start with the second one. I don't have any space RAM. I wish I had some of that. Someday, someday. So these two, the original is just soy sauce flavor, but these two have been around for ever. There's the curry and the seafood. These are actually now going to be available here in the States. Um, these are like the U.S. versions. Uh, I don't have the overseas versions. I reviewed those a long time ago. So, But uh, yeah, so these are in the different cups. They're microwavable. But uh, yeah, seafood and curry. There's like there's like potatoes and egg and stuff in this one and there's seafood and egg and stuff in this one so these are kind of kind of neat to see coming this away because i would have to say one of the things i heard people ask more often than not is what happened to the egg in our cup noodles and i don't know i've never uh, asked what happened to that but yeah there used to be egg in cup noodles here in the u.s and that just kind of went away so hey things changed but this was I what I wanted to show you today this is the same recipe this is the original Nissen chicken ramen um, no it wasn't this one was not made in 1958 it's more recent um, they still make it and uh, yeah I thought I'd cook one of these up today so the story got my my story is when I was between eight and ten years old, we went down. Uh, my mom would make a, Nis a different Nissen product called roasted ramen, and they stopped carrying it. And I, I guess they just maybe it didn't sell too well. I don't know. But anyways, um, we couldn't get it anymore. And my father knew about a place in Seattle called Wajimaya, a big Japanese supermarket. We went down there and showed him the packaging from the. Uh, uh, roasted ramen and they were like oh here try this this is comparable and it was this one it was the chicken ramen while I was there I noticed all these other kinds of instant noodles too and all these different foreign languages and all these different neat colors and pictures and I was like wow what is all this stuff this looks weird and cool <laughs> see I grew up on a in a little town called Anacortes on Fidalgo Island in the northwest of Washington State here in the United States. Um, when I was growing up, there was not a lot of ethnicity going on in town. At least not ethnicity that I saw. I could be totally wrong about that, but this was the uh, early 80s. It was just very, very white bread, very boring, and I'd... Uh, but it, but it was an island and there was a big fishing community there. And uh, I'd go out on, on summer nights and I'd uh, sleep on the back deck and listen to Canadian radio stations and listen to a shortwave radio trying to pull in, you know, different stuff from far away. I've always had a fascination with uh, the exotic and foreign. And Instant Noodles kind of gave me a route to explore those things, different flavors and and stuff without having to go anywhere just well maybe to an asian grocery store but i didn't really have the means as a kid or really as an adult to afford to go to different countries and things like that and luckily in the last few years 
just by my enjoyment of instant noodles and my reviews and my website, companies have invited me to other countries and I've got to experience the cultures and flavors of those places. And it really all started with this right here. And so that's really the reason why I do a Momofuku Ando Day because if it wasn't for that guy, I mean, yeah, there's probably a good chance somebody else might have come up with it, but I don't know. He's got character. He's a he's a good guy. So, yeah. I I think this is the way that it was meant to happen. Anyways, let's crack this sucker open. And I'll show you how you make it. Now, my mom would make it by frying an egg or uh, taking it, cooking it, pouring beaten egg over it in a skillet and frying it up. And the edges of the noodles would get crisp and it was so good. I cannot duplicate that. So, unfortunately, I've kind of given up on trying to. I wish my mom could make it on camera. That's that's what I really want. Mom, if you're watching. Uh, so here we have Nissen, or should I say Nishin, chicken ramen. So as, I don't know if you can see right here, there's a divot and that is where the egg goes. All right, so we have an egg. I'm try to hopefully it'll stay in the middle and it does. The, oh, are you gonna? There you go, it's in the middle. Now I'm gonna turn on the fan so you're gonna hear some fan noise because It does require boiling water. And now we cover it for three minutes. luck with doing this this way. I think what I need is a different, uh, less shallow or less wide bowl. Let's just mix it in. Make it egg droppy style. But yeah, this makes a seriously large bowl of noodles. And they're pre-seasoned. It's kind of like a sesame chicken kind of thing going on. Anybody who's saying, oh my god, that's a raw egg. That was a raw egg. Look, that was a raw egg. All the eggs around here are just fine. So don't have a hissy fit. It's not raw anymore. So yeah. Give that a taste. I'm wearing my Atari shirt because this is kind of a blast from the past. I had this quite often when when I had an Atari that I would play pretty regularly back in the day. Cheers. Mm. Definitely sesame taste to it. Kind of chickeny. Yeah. That brings me back. I had this stuff so often. We'd go down to Seattle, and Anacortes was a long ways from Seattle, so at least. Hmm. Yeah, it was a, it was a ways. It was a a big trip to go down there, and we get like two shopping bags full of the stuff okay, and it would last like for ages we didn't go down there very often we went maybe like once every 
oh, three or four months, and I didn't usually eat all of it myself. A lot of the time I would give it away, you know, so people would try it too. And I think really that's kind of the way the website started, honestly. I and mean, this was way before the internet was like popular. This is in the 80s, but you know, just kind of like I try something, I really like it. I don't, it's, it's hard for me because it's like just telling somebody, hey, this is good, you should try it. And they're like, oh yeah, cool, that, yeah, I'll, I'll have to try that sometime, you know? And they don't, you know, because they might not know where to get it or this or that. If you're gonna tell somebody that something's really good, it's nice to give that to them so they can try it, you know? Uh, I get a lot of, lot of samples and I do that quite a bit, so. Yeah, so, Nissan Chicken Ramen, the first instant noodle on the market uh, originally in 1958, and you can see here. You can see that. Oh yeah, 1958. This is the 60th anniversary of Nissan Chicken Ramen. So, happy birthday, Chicken Ramen! Happy, <laughs> happy birthday, Chicken Ramen, and happy birthday, Nissan! Uh, thank you for continuing to make great products and I'll keep trying them. So, all right. All right, well that concludes the Momofuku Ando Day huge immense long video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks to everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe. You'll get to see something like this every year. So, um, yeah. So, thank you Momofuku Ando wherever you are, time, space, and dimension. All right. Well, hey, this has been Hans the Ramen Raider, wishing you enjoyment of your noodles every day. Have a good one. Bye.